Hi, I'm David Greenebaum, one of the reference librarians at Clayton State. Welcome to the special social distancing video version of my library research and information literacy session. I've broken what would be a single in-class session into five shorter videos. This is the third in the series, and today I'm going to take a live look at the library homepage and conduct searches using the tools we discussed in the previous video. In other videos in this series, I talk about different search strategies you can use while searching library tools, about different kinds of information sources, and which tools you can use to locate them, about critically evaluating the information sources you find, and finally I discuss how and why to cite your sources and avoid plagiarism. The library homepage is your best starting point for pretty much any research project. This is the URL. It's www.clayton.edu slash library. Even though it's pretty easy to remember, I strongly recommend bookmarking it. You're going to find yourself wanting to come back to it often. Right now I'm going to take you on a little live tour and show you some of its more useful features, as well as conduct a couple of sample searches to show you how the library catalog and the databases work and how to access the resources you find. This is the web page. You can see the URL, clayton.edu slash library up here. And to begin with, about 85 or 90 percent of the resources that you're going to use for your basic research projects are accessible directly on this main page. Once you get into some of the more advanced types of searches for your upper division courses, you may need to dig a little deeper, but really just about everything you want to see is right here. We talked in one of the earlier videos about the different types of resources and the tools that were available to use to search them. For books, you want the library catalog. For journal articles, you want the databases. And for online sources, you want LibGuides. And if you look, you will see we have a link to the library catalog here on the left. We also have links to databases. We have the five popular databases that I mentioned uh, down here under search popular resources. And then this alphabetical list links out to the 200 plus databases that we have available as a variety. LibGuides also has its own tool right here on the LibGuides button on the left. The first resource I want to show you, however, is how to access the librarians, because I like to say that the librarian is one of the most useful resources the library has to offer. You can chat with a CSU librarian at any time that the library is open by going to the LibChat feature here. You just put your name into the uh, name box here and click Start Chat and it should connect you to a librarian. Ashley is joining the chat and I'm just going to type in that I'm using this as a demo. she will probably respond. If this were an actual live uh, reference question that I was trying to have answered, Ashley could uh, respond to me with uh, links to resources that would be useful. And uh, she could co-browse with me. She could give me uh, the um, advice that I need in order to uh, successfully uh, find my resources. When I am through with my transaction, I can click the close chat button up here. And when I do that, I still get the chance to see my chat, but not only that, but if I click the transcript button, I get a copy of my chat, which I can then save or email to myself. It will include any links to URLs that the librarian might have sent me. And I can keep that in my records and it will be there for me to refer to later. 
let's go back and look at some of the online resources. Then we can look at the catalog to search for books. So if I go into the library catalog here, I have access to all of our eBooks as well as uh, the locations of our print books. Since I'm not currently able to get to the library, I'm going to try to concentrate on the electronic resources that I may have. We talked about creating keyword searches, so I'm going to try to do a keyword search here uh, for the subject that I had been using in uh, the previous videos. So we'll do women and microfinance. The catalog then returns all of the resources that we have that use those two words. Uh, many of them, as you can see, it's finding them in the title. Uh, other resources may have them uh, in the subject headings or other places. Uh, as you can see from the availability facet here, there are two that are print books that are available in the library. Obviously, we're not going to be interested in those right now. Uh, although if we do have access to the library, those might be useful. But I cannot actually limit to the ones that are accessible online so that I can get them from where I am. So I click on the online accessible ones and it brings me the 34 that are available here. What we're looking at now are the brief title and publication information for those books. To see the more complete information, we can click on any one of these titles. And it shows me, first of all, how I can get at it. It's available through the ebook collection, which is good. This is the more complete publication details, including uh, the subject headings that we were um, discussing in one of the previous videos, microfinance in developing countries. This looks like it's uh, quite a good one for our uh, research topic. So how do I access it? Simply by clicking the link right here. It should take me directly to that item. Now, if I'm off campus, which I am, it's going to ask me to sign in with my SWAN credentials. Having signed in, I now get to the main title page for that item. And if I look a little further down, I have the complete table of contents here. It's possible to browse through the table of contents and jump directly to whichever section of it you might want to go to. So I could select chapter two, for example. When it comes up, we have it in a format that looks exactly the way it would appear as a paper print book. So I can read it online. I have the capacity to download it. Since it is one of our library books, it's not a permanent download, but you can borrow it for a certain amount of time, at which point you will um, basically lose the file. It will just delete itself at the end of the checkout period. Let's say that I wanted to move from my keyword search into a subject search. All I need to do is I can click on the subject heading and it will show me then all of the books that have the subject heading of microfinance, including not just books, but apparently an electronic journal as well. You can see the different format that's available again in this tweak my results column here, which is also in the library world. We sometimes call this the facets because it's different ways that you can break out the results that you've found. We have books, we have journals, one website, a couple of annuals and so forth. So if I were interested in those, I could limit to specifically to annuals or to journals or whatever. Let me go back to the main library page now, and we will look at some journal articles. 
most of the popular databases that you're going to want to use are available here from the main page, as we said. Uh, each of these has its own particular features or characteristics, which makes it special for uh, what we're doing here. Academic Search Complete. This is probably your best first stop for very nearly any research project. Academic Search Complete covers a wide variety of subject areas, so it's good in just about any um, field. It also is heavily skewed towards peer-reviewed academic journals, so it's got that good scholarly content to it. And it also has a large amount of full text availability. There are times when you find references to an article in one of the databases, but the full text may not be available. Academic Search Complete is almost all full text, so you get access to the complete text of the article as well as just the publication information. JSTOR, similarly, is heavily full text. It is heavily academic, and it covers a wide variety of subject areas. The difference is that it is an archival database, meaning that most of the articles found in JSTOR were originally published in non-digital format and were digitized. So if you want older articles, articles from the 70s or the 1940s, uh, you may find what you're looking for in JSTOR. While Academic Search Complete and JSTOR are uh, very broad ranging and cover most subject areas, uh, the remaining three here are more subject specific. Psych Articles covers the psychology and behavioral sciences. CINAHL covers nursing and allied health and Business Source Complete covers, obviously, the business area. So if you're looking for something more specialized, you might want to go into those three databases. Uh, the advantage of the more specialized database, even though it has smaller coverage, that coverage will be more focused, and it also allows you to search using certain aspects of the content that might not be searchable in the other databases. So, for example, in Nursing and Allied Health, you can sort out and look for double-blind cl clinical trials, for example, which may not be a uh, sorting format which is available through Academic Search Complete. I am going to try Academic Search Complete, though, because it is, as I said, it's one of the better first steps for most research projects. So let's go into that one we find ourselves on the basic search screen. This is a fine place for us to start, so I'm going to use the same uh, kind of search that I did before. I'm going to do women and microloans. As you can see from my results, I have 1,122 results. This is a lot. Um, Sometimes you end up with tens of thousands of results, but there is functionally not a lot of difference between a thousand results and ten thousand results. It basically works out to more than I have the time or patience to sort through. So let's try narrowing this down a little bit. And one way that we can do that is in the refined results column to the left here, we have ways to limit by various factors. We want to limit to peer-reviewed journals, so I will click on that. That narrowed us down to 715. Let's limit also to full text availability. And let's limit also by date. Let's say we want things that were published within the last five years. So I will say 2015 to 2020. We're now down to just under 200. That's still a fair amount, so we could further limit by other factors. Uh, as you can see, there are other things you can limit by. Subject terms, company, geography. If I wanted to specifically look at India, for example, I'll click on that. Now we're down to 11. That's a good, comfortable number. When you're looking for, especially 
at the beginning of your search, you're looking to find a good variety of articles. You want to get down somewhere to a couple of dozen, maybe 50 articles. Uh, if you have trouble limiting it to that number, then a good next step would be to look at the first few screens of results and choose the ones that are most on target and then do a subject search based on what you've found there. Here I have 11. That's actually, especially at the very beginning of my search, that might be a little bit narrow. In fact, what I think I will do is I will remove the geographical limiter that I had here from India. I'm going to take that out and we'll go back to the few hundred that we had before. Now again, this is almost 200. That's a lot to look through, but I could do it if I had the patience. But what I want to do here is I just want to um, go into one or two of these results so that you can see what we're looking at here. So here's one called Participation in Self-Help Groups and Empowerment of Women, a Structural Model Analysis. If we click in on the title to that one, we will see the authors, the source, the subject terms, and then further down the abstract, which is a summary in a paragraph or two of what the article is about. This can be a good time saver because instead of reading the full article, you can look at the abstract and make a decision about whether or not you actually want to include this one in your list of referred works. If you do, you still are responsible for reading the complete article. However, if you read the abstract and decide actually this is not something I need, you will have saved yourself a lot of time because this is a 19-page article written in dense scholarly language and reading 19 pages of that for nothing is a lot of investment if you decide you don't actually want it. But let's say this is a good one. Let's say I want to, to use this. What can I do with it? Well, you have a link to the full text of the article right here, so you could uh, download it. You could read it online. I'm going to go in just to show the full text of the article. This is what it looks like. It looks very much the way it would have appeared as published in the journal, as you see. But rather than trying to download this directly, what I want to do is go back to my detailed record and I am going to add it to my folder. If you click this link here, if you look up at the top here, you see we have a folder. This is a kind of a set aside area where you can put things that you want to come back to later. So I'm going to set it in my folder and then I go back to my result list. And the reason for that is that way I can put multiple items into that folder. You see this icon now says this is in my folder. I want to add a few more things into my folder. I'm going to take this one. You click on the title to get the full, art, full reference of it and you can add it to the folder that way. If you go back to your result list, you also can add directly from the brief result list. So I can click here add that one to my folder, add this one to my folder. I get a few in there. I'm not actually making decisions right now about what is valuable and what is not. I'm just putting a few in there as examples of what to do. Now, once I have a few that I like, I can click on the folder and I can operate on all of these simultaneously. So I've got five articles in my folder now and if I would like to, I can print them all off. What I mostly recommend is emailing them to myself. I can set up a research folder in my email where I can send all of the articles that I've found online. So it will be coming from ephost at epnet.com. I can select that it's going to be coming to me. Oddly, it changes the from at that point, that doesn't seem reasonable, but it does. It's included my 
email in all these different places. I don't want that. I want to give it a subject heading that I recognize, but I'm going to say, uh, give it a subject heading of microfinance. You can add some notes to yourself if you want here. Um, it will include the PDF if it's available. If not, it'll include straight HTML full text. The other thing that you can do is you can ask it to build you a citation, and this can be very useful. We can set it to MLA citations. The thing to remember about this is computers are not always very smart, and you're still going to want to check over the citation that it builds to make sure that it follows the proper rules of citation. Uh, oftentimes the entries in the database will include titles that are in all capital letters. That is not appropriate MLA formatted citation. So that will need to be fixed before you, uh, before you go ahead and add it to your list of works cited. I'll click the send button and now it will be in my email box in a little while. So I'll just click continue. So that is using databases. We've done databases. We've done the library catalog. Let me show you the libguides just so that we can go through that as well. The libguide link is right here on the left. We click on libguides and we get to the uh, subject areas for all the libguides. Now, as I mentioned in a previous video, there are some course specific libguides for English 1101. Let me click on English here and it shows you all of them. The English 1101 libguide is here. Click on this and it gives you tabs to show all kinds of different tips and tricks for uh, things that are specific to the English 1101 course. Uh, so you can, if you're looking for help in finding a topic, we've got some videos and uh, tutorials and uh, other subject guides to tell you how to, uh, how to work on finding a topic. Uh, if you look under current hot topics, you will see links out to some specifically useful databases and resources that are good on um, looking at uh, contemporary or timely topics. Uh, different uh, examples that have been uh, in the news lately or that have been uh, most current, uh, some tutorials on keyword searching and so forth. Some of this will look familiar to you. That's a quick overview of the library website and I hope that that is useful to you. That is it for this section of the videos. In the next section, I will talk to you about critically evaluating the information that you found. Thanks for tuning in. And as a reminder, the librarians are available to help you even when we're all in our own spaces. You can reach us by phone, by email, or via live chat from the library's homepage. Bye now. See you next time.